up, my name is Kayla, and today's video is going to be different than what I normally do. So if you kind of want to learn more about sign language, I have more videos about ASL. Today's going to be more about service dogs and emotional support animals. I have a service dog myself. Um, she is a service dog in training, which is different than a service dog. Let's start that off. Um, but I'm going to be mainly talking about service animals and the difference between that and emotional support animals and therapy dogs. So, a lot of people might be like, oh, I have an emotional support animal, which is my service dog. That is completely a false statement. <laughs> um, I know it right now it's kind of a trend to get an emotional support dog. Um, I love dogs myself since I have a service dog in training um, and she's amazing. I have epilepsy, um, which is a seizure disorder, um, and she is getting task trained, which a task is something for her to migrate my disability. Um, so she, she responds to my seizures. Um, so she lays on top of me to help put pressure on me when I'm having a seizure to lessen um, the like time I have a seizure. She licks my face so when I wake up I don't freak out because when people have seizures they normally when they try to wake up out of consciousness it kind of freaks out I, like you're not really fully there and I also have this thing called POTS and my heart rate gets really high and she alerts to my high heart rate because it's like when I'm standing, sitting, whenever. And she um, paws at me. And so when I get pawed at, it means I automatically sit down or lay down if I'm in an area so I don't faint and I'm in a safe place so I don't hurt myself. Um, so that is how my service dog in training does a task. Other service dogs, can be for a lot of people know service dogs as for the blind. Those make up around 40% of service animals, which is amazing. Those dogs, I think, are like the holy grail of service animals. They're amazing. I think all service dogs are up there. Um, you also have mobility, you have hearing dogs. Uh, I also am trying to teach her for hearing since I am deaf. Um, I'm trying to have her try to alert me to emergency vehicles, um, but I'm more focusing on seizure response um, because that's what I personally want her to do more of. Um, please don't con comment on what her task should be. My, it's my personal thing. Um, sorry, mobility, autism, blindness, seizure response, and alert. There are al seizure alert dogs. It is kind of hard. For that though, she does not naturally alert to my seizures, um, which is fine. It is really difficult for that. Um, so I don't need that. That's fine. And other medical alerts, um, like allergies, other medical alerts, a disability under the ADA law. And PTSD, stuff like that, psychiatric, um, is considered a disability because you can have like really terrible anxiety attacks that can put you into seizures, stuff like that. Like you, um, some people may know them as like veterans dogs, even though not all veterans have PTSD and not all people who have PTSD are veterans. Those just are some of the people um, that people might associate with PTSD. So those are some task service dogs. Um, are performed to do. Obviously, there's so many more. I know of at least over 150 tasks service dogs can do. Um, there's so many. Um, it's amazing how much dogs can do. Um, miniature horses are also considered service animals under the ADA law, which is so amazing. I think that must be so hard. I don't know how I would handle a horse. <laughs> I live in an apartment. I don't think I would be able to have that. Um, I wouldn't be able to provide for that <laughs> at all. Anyway, emotional support animal um, can be a cat, a lizard, a bird, anything, a dog, anything. And it's covered under the ADA. So an emotional support animal differs from a service dog because it, it is not task trained. 
it is there for emotional support. It does not do any tasks. So it does not help with any disability or anything like that. It's just there for emotional support. So I'm allowed to bring my dog anywhere that the public is allowed. Vice versa, emotional support animals are not given public access rights. And nor are therapy dogs. Therapy dogs are actually supposed to be invited places such as hospitals. A lot of people don't know that difference. Um, if you see a therapy dog out, they are invited to that place and has to be a pet friendly place. Um, such as the emotional support animals that you see in the registration, those are fakes and those are scams. Under the ADA law, there's no such thing as a registration. You can self um, train your service dogs. I'm self training her since it's extremely expensive to get one. It's like $15,000 but I'm getting help with a um, trainer just not getting one from an organization um, but your emotional support animal is not allowed to go to non pet friendly places with you I have run into this problem so many times which is this is why I wanted to make this video last time I went out to Publix which is a grocery store this woman came up to me and she asked me why do you have your dog and I don't have like some people with service animals have like why they have it like PTSD dog whatever I just have service dog in training um, and in my state she does have the same right as a service dog if you're gonna come at me don't I look this up trust me um, and I it's kind of rude to ask that please don't ask about my disability I am uncomfortable about that, but I did say she's for seizure response, and she's like, oh, okay, well, I bring my dog for my emotional support, and I said, please do not ever bring your emotional support dog in non-pet friendly places. She said, well, I pay my $300, and I said, that is an illegal scam. Under the ADA, there's no such thing as registries, nothing. That's not a thing. Those are all just scams to get your money. There's this thing called Fair Housing Act. That's the only thing that protects emotional support animals. That's the only thing that they're allowed to protect is that they're allowed to go into non-pet friendly housings and to get um, for free. So they don't have to have a pet fee if you have an emotional support animal. And to get an emotional support animal, you have to have certain documents from your therapist, from your doctor. Like it's not just like I'm calling my dog an emotional support animal just to get it for free. My roommate did that and you're you can't just do that like your dog has to be somewhat behaved um because she ended up having to move out because i have a service dog and her dog was excessively barking it was aggressive even though it's a emotional support animal it doesn't have to be like as trained as a service dog it can't be aggressive it can't be like because like she got put into us even though I said no animals because it's considered a, an emotional support animal so she can go anywhere but it still has to maintain these certain expectations and it did not and so she ended up having to get moved because it did not meet it and because she honestly only did that calls it one of those because she didn't want to have to pay the fee and which is a lot of people are starting to do now and so when that woman came up to me in Publix, I tried to explain to her all these things. And she was like, no, I brought her everywhere. And like, that's the thing, like, you're putting my safety at risk. And I've gotten into so many arguments with people over this. And it's like, your dog should be trained enough to not to be distracted by my emotional support animal. It's like, it's not about my dog, it's about your dog. Your dog's not trained, your dog's barking, lunging, potentially being attacking other people, other animals. And if I'm having a seizure and your dog comes up to mine, that automatically puts my dog at risk and puts me at risk for death. I could potentially die because your untrained dog is there. And other people go into medical episodes, like I have to wait until I have a seizure, but other people, like they have seizure alert dogs. And imagine a dog missing their alert because you decided that you just wanted to bring your dog just because that and like they can sue you because you like wrongfully 
assume that your dog was a service animal, they can sue you and you, that's actually a felony and you can go to jail for that. And for saying that your dog is a service dog when it clearly is not. And a lot of people think, oh, I just slapped a service dog vest on, like I got it from Amazon. Like, there's two questions that they're allowed to ask. Is this a service dog and what task can they provide? If you're not allowed or if you cannot like truthfully say what it is you can get kicked out and if your dog does not act like a service dog you are allowed to get kicked out no matter what even if like my dog if she barks i will immediately leave the store she should never bark she should never act out of line i don't ever expect her to but that's on me that's on the handler like i would never allow that so i expect that those dogs immediately get taken out like those stores should do better jobs of seeing if a dog is a service dog or if it's an emotional support animal so please do not bring your emotional support animals when you do not have public access rights so service dogs you can also have tandem teams which is pretty cool i didn't really know about this um which is <laughs> you can have more than one service dog for yourself so you can have two or three I know you can have two I don't know how many you can have up to if anyone leave want to leave that in the comments uh, you're more than welcome to which I think is really cool um some people for mobility and they can just serve like have one dog for these certain amount of tasks and one dog for the other amount of tasks I think that's wonderful um so you can have multiple service dogs so if you have bring like two to the store some says you can only have one no you can have multiple look up the law like that's amazing and um a misconception is they provide emotional support for service dogs which is not true they provide a metal it's more like a medical equipment and i am sick and tired of people saying that she every dog provides emotional support like yes but at the same time my dog helps save my life <laughs> like i have my dog everywhere so I don't die. Like I, if I wake up from a seizure and she's not there, I can potentially like freak out and start hurting myself or she's not on top of me. I could have hurt myself. Like it's not a safe thing. And if she misks, misses a task, which like to alert me that my heart rate's too high, I could have passed out, hit my head, and it's just not a safe thing. So please, emotional support animals and service dogs are very different. Service dogs also do not have to be marked as service dogs. They can just be in naked. Um, a lot of people do, I personally do. Um, I have her being marked as a service dog. It's just easier. I know it's wrong um, just to say it's easier since it should not have to be easier but I just would rather identify her as a service dog so no one comes up to me and says, can I pet? Also, service dog etiquette, please don't pet, don't fawn over her, don't say what breed is she. I've had most people follow me, me my mom, ask what breed she is, since so she is a Staffshire Terrier. Um, she's not a common service dog breed. Um, some common ones are Golden Retriever, Poodle, Great Dane, those are mostly from mobility, um, but honestly you can use for anything. Um, Collies, um, I'm totally missing other ones. Just, if you have a service dog, comment down below what kind of service dog you have. I know there's so many different ones. Um, and if, like I know there's so many people saying, oh my God, you're not blind, you don't need a service dog. It's just, like times are changing like get that out of your head it's not right and I if I look able-bodied don't say anything like I've had so many people so many people say oh my god who do you work for to train these dogs like I work for myself this is for me <laughs> like please you don't know how hard it is for me to wake up in the morning because I'm exhausted from the seizure I had the other day like please man <laughs> like i don't want to have to explain this to you or have people just like stare her down like first of all you should never stare down a dog in its face 
Like no matter how friendly it is or anything, you should never do that. Or never allow your child to go, just run up to any dog. Any dog, no matter how friendly it is or anything, never allow your just child to run up to it. Because that's very dangerous. You can't just do that. No matter what, like it's just dangerous for the dog and for the kid. Please don't do that. So please just know that stop pretending that your most important animal is a service dog. It's not. It puts people who have service dogs at risk and it makes our job a lot harder because we have to protect our rights. And then we get really angry because you are putting us in jeopardy and, and it's just not helpful. So thank you for watching and if you have anything else to say, put in the comments. Um, I will delete anything negative or mean because service dog community can be a little judgmental, so can the non-service dog community. So anything mean, negative, you're out, done, not having it. <laughs> Thank you.